give God a hand praise as we welcome those that will be joining us by Facebook and later by YouTube. Amen. The Lord's House of Prayer, sincere milk of the word, Sunday morning worship service where the word reminds us we're for laying aside our malice and our guile and our hypocrisies and our envies and all evil speaking as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. If so be I have tasted that the Lord is gracious. And so we thank God for his word on today. We're going to get right into it. Amen. And as we've been talking um, the past, well, all last month basically about the mind, how the devil comes and manipulates the mind. But God's word comes to regulate yeah. the mind. Amen. And, and so we, we're going to look at a few scriptures on today. Amen. How many want your mind regulated? Yeah. Amen. You look at the world today and the world is in such a mess because the enemy has manipulated the minds. And it all started again with who? Adam and Eve. And the devil deceived Eve mm -hmm. into partaking of the fruit, made evil look good and good look evil. Mm -hmm. So she partook, and then Adam was right there, so she just handed it to him. Amen. And he partook. Amen. And the Bible says, um, we're tempted when um, drawn, drawn away, away of your own oh, lust. And enticed. But then it says, when lust have conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. So she conceived that manipulated word into her spirit, where the devil took the word of God and he just added something to it, took something from it, made it his word, and got, at, got Eve to conceive it. And she gave to Adam, and when she gave it to Adam, as we explained, the sin wasn't complete when she did it. It wasn't complete until Adam put to it. Because that's when their eyes were open, and they saw that they were naked. And we've been running around naked ever since. Until Jesus Christ came and clothed us back in his righteousness. And that's the key. We have to be clothed in the righteousness of God. Amen. Amen. Because if you're walking in sin, your nakedness is showing. Amen. We looked at the scriptures. Amen. And so this week we're going to be, um, uh, well today we're going to be talking about just nothing in me. That's what God gave me. Nothing in me. Go to John 14. John chapter 14, because what we are seeking to do is reverse the curse. That's what Jesus came to do, is reverse the curse. Because of what Adam and Eve did, all men, women, boys, and girls are born in sin and shaped in iniquity. That's why it is so important, as I teach you, it is so important that we watch what we are allowing into our hearts Amen. and into our minds. Yeah. Amen. Amen. We have to be very careful. Yes. Amen. Because we're still, if you're not careful, you're still partaking of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Amen. Amen. It's that mixture. And God don't like mixture. He said, I wish you were either hot or cold. But because you're lukewarm, you're somewhere in between. Amen. He said, I'm going to spew you out of my mouth. And most of us can kind of understand that because if you're drinking something cold, you want it cold. I don't know about you, but when I drink something cold, I want it just before it freezes. I like it to be just as cold as it can be without freezing. Amen. But when I'm drinking something hot, Amen. I want it to be um, hot. And I always talk about my wife. I don't, I'm not as bad as she is because if she's drinking a cup of coffee, she's going to warm that thing up about two, three times before she's done because when it starts getting lukewarm, she got to warm it up. I can kind of drink it lukewarm, but she, 
But but God don't like nothing halfway. Because we even talked about, and, and it's in the Bible. That's why saints is so important that we get in the word of God. Because I was thinking about it this morning. Amen. And I've been working so much. I've been working six days a week, probably most of this year. And, and um, I woke up yesterday, and then I'm supposed to be to work at like uh, 8.30. I woke up early, but I was just laying around. And then um, finally, I asked my wife about five minutes to eight. I asked my wife, well, are you going to church this morning? She said, church? It's Saturday. <laughs> Jump up and hurry up and get ready for work. Because the days are starting to run together. Amen. But I was just thinking, amen, how important it is that we get in God's word and have our minds renewed. Amen. Because if our minds are not renewed, we are operating out of a manipulated mind. A mind that is um, perverted. Amen. And that's what we have to remember about the world. The whole world lies in wickedness. Mm -hmm. It's darkness. The whole world is under the control of the devil. Yeah. That's why we have to be um, watch whatever we're doing. We have to watch, amen, what we are receiving into our spirits. Amen. And so we're going to look at Jesus because he's our example. Amen. And something that he says in the scripture we're about to read is so important that we get it. How many want to be like him? Amen. Amen. We used to sing that song, to be like Jesus. Oh, how I long to be like him. Amen. And if you're going to be like him, you're going to have to do what he did. Amen. Because he wasn't who he was just because. It was because of what he did. So we want to look at that today. Amen. And look at some scriptures. Amen. And um, as, as it was said, we're in a fight because your flesh is your worst enemy. Because your flesh has been perverted. Your flesh likes sin. Amen. 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 I don't care who you are, your flesh right. likes, likes sin. Yeah. It's your spirit mm -hmm. that wants to be like God. Paul said, one of the greatest apostles ever was, he says, I delight in the law of God after the inner man, the spiritual man, the spiritual part of me delights in the law of God. But I see a whole nother law in my members that's bringing me into captivity to the law of sin that is in my members. He said, in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. To say no God thing. Ain't nothing in your flesh of God. Ever since um, they ate from that tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Amen. I say that the, the flesh is total. And you know when your car is total, the insurance don't pay you for it. I mean, I mean they don't fix it. If it's total, they can't be fixed. They just total it so they give you some money and they take it take the vehicle. And that's how the flesh is. It can't be salvaged. But thank God your spirit can't be salvaged. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. That's yes. what we're working on here. Amen. Amen. But it takes work. Yes. Amen. Amen. So let's go to John chapter 14. And um, we're going to look at a few things here. And John chapter 14. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Let's start at, actually, you know what I want to do? I want to go to the first verse. Amen. We may not commentate on everything, but actually, the verse that we're going to focus on is... Uh, Our focal verse is going to be verse 
30. But we're going to start at verse 1. I just want us to let the words of God sink down in our hearts. And, and one of the things that the Lord was dealing with me about, I believe it was this morning, I reminded me yesterday. Um, this is the mind of God. If you want to know what God thinks about what's going on in the world or whatever, get in the word of God because Amen. this is his mind. Amen. And that's what we have to get is his mind. Amen. Amen. Because, um, and, and, and I'm going to say this, you know, the, the young man, what's his name that just died? The young YouTube, Kevin Samuel. He was a, what, a relationship type of person and a lot of people would listen to him about relationships and whatnot. And um, I just listen to him because sometimes I like to just hear what people are saying. And um, the thing that the Lord was dealing with me about, especially for, you know, us as saints of God, we don't get our counsel from the world. Okay, because they're dealing from a carnal standpoint, from a perverted standpoint. I talked about it a little bit before, Steve Harvey. You don't go to Steve Harvey when you're in a, in a relationship device, because he's going to tell you some crazy stuff like, uh, tell, he tell the young women, make, make the man wait six months, before you, 90 days? Oh, okay, see. Um, but he said 90 days, and we wrote that book, Think Like a Man, Act Like a Woman, something like that. But he said, wait 90 days before you have sex with me. The Bible tell you, wait till you get married. Huh? Amen. And I don't know if I'd be trusting too much of his relationship advice anyway. You've been married how many times? And, and, and Samuel's been married a few times himself. I think I would trust the word of God. So I want us, and, and we're going to start our, um, the fourth Sunday is going to be um, a pure life single for the singles. And we're going to deal with all of this because we can't go to the world for advice. We have a whole book of counsel. This tells you how you are to act and how you are to behave. You don't go to the world. The world's idea of dating for the first six, well, let me not even get started there. Okay, but get ready, because we're going we to work on that. Because the word of God, every area of your life, you can find it in the word of God, how you are to order it. And so we got to get back to God's word, because you know here, we we after the old path. Yes. The Bible said stand in the way, it didn't say stand in the way, W-A-Y, it said stand in the ways. Got an S on it, why? Because there are a whole lot of different ways. But we got to stand in the ways and see and ask for what? The old path. Because the word of God is the same today, yesterday, and forever. It doesn't change. And when you learn how to walk in it, it'll keep you from changing. Yes. Right, yeah. Amen. Amen. And so let's let's look and let's hear what the Spirit is saying to the church today. Okay. Now, verse uh, chapter fourteen, verse one. It says, "Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me, in my Father's house of many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. What I want to say about this is, he's going to prepare a place for us, but it is a this is what the old folks used to tell us. It's a prepared place for a prepared people. See, you have to understand, this is the dressing up room right down here. Anybody naked into the new heavens and the new earth don't have to be new themselves. Huh? 
If any man be in Christ, he's a what? New a new creation. Hope all things have passed away, and behold, something. All things have become new, and all things are of God, who um, reconciled us unto himself by Jesus Christ. And so what he's doing now is he's preparing us for this prepared place. Yes. <laughs> he went ahead to prepare it. But then, because this is something you have to understand, because I always talk about you have to convert the Old Testament to the New Testament. Okay, we are them. Okay. He didn't come to destroy the law. He came to fulfill the law. So when, and the Bible again says, the things that happened to them happened for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the scripture might have hope. And so when he brought them out of Egypt, where did he take them? Right into the promised land? No. He took them into the wilderness. Why? Because they were full of good and evil. Yes, yes. See, they were full of Egypt. Mm -hmm. They had saw the idolatry, and that's why when they got in the wilderness, whenever things went a little bad, what did they keep doing? Convert them yeah. back to, to Egypt. Egypt. Yes. When Jesus went up into the mountain, he was up there for 40 days and 40 nights, they said, make us gods to take us back to Egypt. Mm -hmm. So the wilderness, the purpose for the wilderness was to um, deprogram them and then reprogram them. Get them prepared for the promised land. Mm -hmm. See, God had to reveal himself to them in the wilderness. He had to show them. That's why he judged all of the gods of Egypt. Amen. Those, those ten plagues was uh -huh. the judgment of the gods of Egypt. Yeah. So that he can show them that he was the true God. Yeah. See, there are God's many and Lord's many, but to us who believe and to know the truth, it ain't but one. Amen. 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 And his name is Jesus. Yes. He's yes. the son of the living God. Yes. Amen. But he had to, to, to reprogram them to get Egypt what? Out of them. So that's what he's doing. When, when, he, when you get saved, we don't go right to heaven when you get saved. No, you come what? Into this wilderness of sin. Amen. We in the wilderness. And you have to see the world as a wilderness. Because when you don't, you'll start going, you know, falling in love with what? The things of this world. But when you see the world as a place where God is um, using to get that old nature out of you and to reprogram you to get you ready for this prepared place. And that's what you have to stay focused on. And that's why we teach the way we teach here. Amen. Because by the time, here, here was a problem with them. By the time they got to the brink of the promised land and God told them, I've given you the promised land, go take it. But because their faith had not grown in the wilderness, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they couldn't go in. Mm -hmm. It wasn't God that God couldn't take them in, but they didn't believe it. How many know God can't do nothing, nothing for you that you don't believe he can do? That's right. Amen. Huh? The Bible says Jesus could not do many miracles in his own okay. country yeah. because they didn't believe. Mm -hmm. Amen. The outsiders believe more than his own yeah. fault. You know why? One of the reasons, because um, they thought they knew him. Mm -hmm. They said, isn't this the yeah. son of the carpenter? Uh -huh. And his brothers, his sisters, we know their whole family. Matter of fact, I used to babysit Jesus. I changed his pamper. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm dead. You understand right, what I'm saying. Right. But they thought they knew him. Right. But they knew him after the flesh, but not they didn't. They didn't have a clue who he was in the spirit. So you have to understand. So you have to believe God. Without faith, it is impossible. You got to believe God. God can do anything but faith. He told one. Who was that? Uh, was it Abraham? I'm the God of the whole earth. Is there anything? 
too hard for me. Yes. Amen. And we got to believe that God can deliver us from all sin. Yes, and not just deliver us, but we got to believe that he can keep he us. Can keep us. Not just save you, but he can keep yes. you saved. Amen. Amen. But there's something we have to do. So understand what God is doing. He's preparing us for what? Yes. This prepared place. Yes. That's why you go through your trials, your tribulations, your temptations. I always say, pay attention to what's coming out of you because that's what God wants you to see. So you can deal with it. Yes. Amen. And when yes. mess come up out of you, don't pretend it ain't you. <laughs> Amen. Anybody ever been surprised by something that came out of you? Some of your actions? <laughs> Amen. 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 But no, that was you. It was in there. That's how I was taught. And it came out. So now what do you do about it? That's what's going to make the difference. If we seek to cover our sins, we won't prosper. But if we confess them and forsake them, we'll find mercy. Amen. Amen. Through mercy and truth, that iniquity is purged. Oh, we got to go yeah, back to yeah. that old song they used to sing. It's me, it's me, yes, it's yes, me, yes, oh Lord. Yes, yes, not my brother, not my sister. Yes, yes, it might have been my brother, my sister that brought it out of me, but it's me. <laughs> it might have been my boss on the job that brought it out, but he brought it out of me. I need you to help me. So that I don't respond wrong. Yes. Ooh, thank you, Lord. Thank Amen. Because we respond according to what's if it, if it's not in you. The old saying, you can't get blood out of a turnip. Why not? Because there's no blood in a turnip. That's right. Amen. <laughs> but you can get some turnip juice out of it. <laughs> Whatever's in you. That's right. And that's why God is working on us, trying to get everything yeah. out of us that ain't us. Yeah. That's what the wilderness is all about. Yeah. Okay, let's go back. Okay, 14 and 4. And whether I go, ye know, and the way ye know. He said, I'm going to prepare a place, and where I'm going, you know, and the way you know. Verse 5, Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So where was he taking us? He's taking us back to God. Amen. That relationship that Adam and Eve had in the garden before the fall, we got to get back to that relationship. Because when you, if you don't, if you you still wearing these fig leaves, you ain't gonna feel right in his presence. Mm -hmm. See? And so that's why he's, he's taking us back to that place, but he has to clean us up. He has to wash us. And that's why we have to constantly tell him, Lord, if it's in me and it's not of you, take it out. Listen to what Jesus said. Jesus said, verse six, unto him, I'm the way, the truth, the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If he, if he had known me, you should have known my Father yes. also. And from henceforth, ye know him and have seen him. All right. Okay. Why? Because Jesus Christ is the word of God manifested in the flesh. See? And, and the Bible says his name will be called Emmanuel, God with us. In Colossians, it says that um, he is the, um, how does it say that? Express image. Okay, that's one thing it said, the express image of his person. But it all, oh, what it says is, in Christ dwells the fullness of the Godhead in the body. Mm -hmm. So the Father was in Christ, mm -hmm. okay, reconciling the world unto himself have to understand that. That's why no man can come to the Father except for through. You can't get to you can't get to the Father through um, Allah. Because Allah is the moon God. You can't get through him, to him through um, Confucius and through all these other gods and goddesses. You can't even get to him through Mary in the Catholic Church. 
Because she a goddess. Mm -hmm. Amen. You, you can't, no. You got to come through Jesus. Because yes. he's the word of God manifested in the flesh. He didn't say I am a way. He said I am the way. This is what he says in verse 9. Jesus said unto him, well, verse 8. Philip said unto him, show us the Father and it suffices us. Because they still didn't fully understand who he was. Jesus said unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet have thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father, and how sayest thou then, Show us the Father? Believeth thou not that I am in the Father, the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me. He doth. Okay. Father that dwelleth in me. See, that's why we believe here that um, um, we teach that Jesus is the um, only true God. We don't we don't Amen. teach Trinitarian doctrine here. We teach uh, that there's one God who is Himself a triune person. Mm -hmm. There's not a Trinity of persons. Mm -hmm. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. No, it's God the Father, period. It's the Word of God and the Spirit of God. Okay, but they're not separate persons from God. It's His Word and His Spirit. That's what the Bible teaches. And that's why He said, I'm in the Father. How was He in the Father? He was the Word of God. Where's the man's Word? It's in Him. God's Word is in Him. Okay, but He said, I believe it or not that I am what? In the Father and the Father in me. Because the Father was in that flesh. Okay? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doth the words. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very works sake. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And what? Greater, greater, greater works. works. But what is, is necessary for us to do the greater works? We've got to believe on him. We've got to obey him. Because he said the works that I do, if you believe on me, you're going to do them too. And not only what I do, but you're going to do greater works. And he didn't mean in, in um, greater as far as scope, but in number. Because he, his work was cut short because he had a short time on earth. But the church, God's church should be still doing the greater works. Amen. So where are the greater works? See, God is trying to raise our faith level. Mm -hmm. Because our faith level yeah, has dropped. Mm -hmm. You can Lord. say you believe <laughs> and still not believe. All right. Ask Martha. What did Martha say? When, 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 when Jesus went to raise Lazarus, he told Martha, he said, if you believe, you see the glory of God. Uh -huh. And Martha said, uh, I believe and he, he told him, if you believe, you'll see your brother again. And then what did she say? I know I'll see him again in the resurrection. Huh? But Jesus wasn't talking about in the resurrection. He said, wait, you talking about you'll see him in the resurrection. You don't even know who I am, do you? I love it when Jesus talked to me. He said, I am the resurrection. The resurrection is standing before you. And so she confessed her belief, but she didn't possess the faith. Mm -hmm. How do you know? Because when he finally got to the point where he told them to roll the stone away because I'm finna show you something. Mm -hmm. What did she say? Oh, no. Uh-uh. Oh, By now, he's stinking. Because it's been four days. So she... Puff as something she didn't possess. Mm -hmm. 
And so we have to really, I'm asking God to give us the spirit of revelation. The spirit of faith. We have the same spirit. When you have the spirit of faith, that's when you can't help but trust God. You can't help but believe God. That's when you yeah. see the greater works. Amen. And I believe we're going to see greater works. Because we're working on it. <laughs> Amen. And we're working on ourselves individually and collectively. Amen. So he said, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also in greater works than these, because I shall he do, because I go unto the, my Father. And whatsoever he shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If he shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Okay? If ye love me, what? Keep my commandments. Keep my commandments. That's how you know you love God, because you keep his Commandments, not just because you say you love it. Amen. You got to show you love it. That's how you know. If you keep his commandments, he said, that's how you know you love him. Verse 16. If if well, 15 again, if you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Now, he's not talking about another person. He's talking about another comfort in another form because the Holy Ghost was in Christ. But when Christ went back to heaven, he sent back the Holy Ghost or he came back what? In another form. You have to get the revelation. Look, look what he said, verse 17. Even the spirit of truth. Now, what did he say he was? I am the way, the truth. truth. Uh -huh. Now, the Holy Ghost is the spirit of truth. Uh -huh. Whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. He dwell with them in Christ. But he said, when I go back, I'm going to send him back and he's going to be in you. And you know it takes the Holy Ghost in you to keep you from sin. Amen. Because <laughs> when he, the Holy Ghost was with him, it was, the Holy Ghost was with Peter and with the other apostles in Christ. But Peter still was cussing. Because <laughs> sometimes the Holy Ghost is with you and your mama. He went you and your dad, but he ain't in you. And you still doing what you ain't got no business yeah. doing. But when he gets in you. Because when the Holy Ghost got in, Peter was still cutting folk ear off. And the Holy Ghost was with him. But when he got in, that's what made the difference. And listen what he'll do in you. Okay, he said, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I, did y'all catch that? He said, I'm going to send the Holy Ghost, but he said, I'm coming back. That ought to give you some revelation. I will come to you. Get a little while and the world see me no more, but ye see me because I live, ye shall live also. At that day, ye shall know that I am in my Father, and he in me, and I in you. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that what? The love Amen. Because everybody talking about they love God. Mm -hmm. But very few people are keeping his commandments. Yes. And we ain't talking about the ten, we're talking about the two. Mm -hmm. Love the Lord Ooh, thy God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. And love your neighbor as yourself. Because if you keep the two, you keep the ten. That's right. Amen. The ten is fulfilled Ooh, in the two. You only got to focus on the two. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Focus on loving God with everything in you. And loving your neighbor as, as yourself. yourself. Amen. That's the two that we have to keep. The Amen. two will get you in. Because remember when they went, when they were getting ready to go into the promised land, they sent 12 tribes, 12 uh, spies. Oh. Ten of them came back with an evil report. Mm -hmm. That's the Ten Commandments. Because they couldn't keep it. <laughs> oh, 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 
But the two, yes. Caleb and Joshua, yes. they said, oh, we can do we this. Can take if God is for us, who? Who can be against us? Huh? Amen. They were ready to go. Yes. They was like, hey, this is a, they were tired of the wilderness. <laughs> They were tired and they saw all them big old grapes and yeah. all that. They said, this is a good land. Yeah. What we waiting for? Yeah. But the ten came back. Oh yeah, the land is good, but we right. saw the giants. Mm -hmm. We looked like grasshoppers right. in, 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 in our sight. Mm -hmm. See, that's why you don't compare your situation yeah. to your ability. Yeah. You compare it to your God. God is bigger than that. Amen. Yes. Mm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And so the ten couldn't take him in, but the mm -hmm. two. Because the ten died in the wilderness, but yes. the two went into the promised land. Caleb and Joshua, Joshua were the only one of the twelve that went in. Uh -huh. That's a revelation. Yeah. It's Amen. the two that's going to take us in. Loving God. Focus on loving him. Yeah. And how do we know we love him? Because yeah. we keep his command. Amen. We're going to show you something about that. In a Listen to what he says. Verse 21. He that have my commandments and keep with them, he it is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. Judas said unto him, not Iscariot, not the one that betrayed him, Lord, how is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us and not unto the world? Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, uh -huh. he will keep, keep my, my words. words. Yes. And my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. Yes. Father, word, and Holy Ghost will come and make our abode with him. He that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings. And the word which he hears not mine, but the fathers which hath sent me. So, um, but the fathers which sent me. So, saints, we must judge whether we love God or not by our works. Whether we keep his commandments or not. Ain't no need talking about how much you love God and you can't stand your brother and your sister. All right, all right, all right. How can you say you love God whom you never see right. and don't love your brother who you see on a daily basis? Yeah. Now, that don't mean you got to deal with everybody. Mm -hmm. Now, that's right, that's right. I can love you and not deal with you mm -hmm. because of what's in you. Yeah. you gotta be, yeah. See, the Lord told me something about some certain folk. He told me straight up, he said about this particular person, he said, if he speak fair words, if he all of a sudden start talking real nice and stuff to you, don't believe him. Because there's seven abominations in his heart. That's what he told me about this person. I see this person and I say, hi. I, I, you know. But, but we don't have nothing. We, I love him, but I can't deal with him. Anybody ever dealt with a liar? Yeah. Oh, my God. After so long, tell me if I'm, tell me if I'm wrong. After so long, you stop believing, right? Yes. If, every, if every time they tell you something, it's a lie? Okay, you're a little demented if you keep believing. <laughs> That's why I don't, I don't, I, I said, even if, even if it's not going to be in your favor, tell me the truth. Because yes. I can deal with you if you telling me the right. truth. I have a hard time dealing yes. with folk that's lying to me all the time. You know why? Because I can't believe you. But I can still love you. Yes. If you need a piece of bread, I got a piece of bread for yes. you. Amen. Right. Yes. And, and, and I know we've been taught in years past, and, and y'all y'all pray for me because I, I'm I'm examining this. But we've been taught in years past not to dream, feed folk 
with long ham spoon, but some people, I'm just thinking. Some people now. You got to open their cage and just throw the food in there. You still see them. But you deal with snakes a little different. <laughs> Some folks, they just trying to get close enough to kill you. All right, that part. all right, that part. <laughs> Didn't the Bible say, "Beware of wolves yes. that come to you in sheep clothing"? Yes, that's what it says. You got to watch a wolf, cause the reason the wolf want to get around the sheep, cause he sees a meal. Now, now. The, the shepherd, he sees the sheep to be taken care of. Uh -huh. But the yeah. wolf, he just see lunch. Yeah. <laughs> and so the shepherd got to make sure the wolf stay away from the sheep. The sheep. Uh -huh. So you love everybody, but you can't yeah. treat everybody the same. The same. That's right. That's not, that's right. Just not practical. That's right. Huh? Yeah. But we got to make sure we really love everybody. Right. You know, because in my flesh, Amen. sometimes I be, I, I'm going to tell you, the devil be trying to, sometimes, you know, <laughs> and, and I, I just had that at some point, because the devil, he comes, sometimes he just comes in like a flood and try to bombard yes. your yes. mind and, yes. and, and just have you, have you about sweating over folk. Yeah. And, 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 and at some point, you got to say, get thee behind me, yeah. Satan. Yeah. And just say, Father, forgive them, for they know not what, what they, they do, do, so you can move on. Because uh -huh. right. right. the devil will have right. you, well, you should have yeah. said this, and you should have done that. Right. The next time you see him, don't even speak to him. Right. Just act like you don't see him. Yeah. Am I telling the truth? So, so when I see him, I still... I, I, I still, if, if I get close, I can still hug you, but we don't have nothing to talk about behind that unless you're ready to repent. See, because we, and I'm going to tell you something that the Lord told me, and it is so important that we understand this, that the church has become a breeding ground for wolves because we don't beware of them. Uh-huh. Pulpit is full of wolves. I was looking at one the other day. Somebody sent me this, this uh, thing of this preacher, and I was listening to him. And then I got to the end of the message, and so he was doing the offering thing. Y'all know what I the offering thing. We've been around church guy for a long time. We know the offering thing. And so I was like, you know, because some of the stuff he was saying was okay, but so I started looking at several of his messages, and that in the every message was the offering thing. I said, "This ain't nothing but a wolf." Fleece in the flock, and if we don't check them, they just multiply. Wolves beget wolves. <laughs> And God is trying to warn us because he's trying to get us ready. Yeah. Be prepared. And the reason why the church gets a bad name is because of wolves mm -hmm. that come in sheep clothing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. But God is exposed. Yes. yes, he is. So we can know who we're dealing with. Because mm -hmm. God still has some, you know, um, what the scripture said, God said, I'm going to give you pastors after my own oh, heart who are going to feed you with yes. knowledge and understanding. Saints, you do not have to believe wolves. And then you have to ask God to open up your understanding yes. so you don't keep falling prey. Mm -hmm. So, I guess I went there for a reason. <laughs> but let's get back over here. Verse 24 again. He that loveth me not, keepeth not my sayings, and the word which he hears not mine, but the Father's which sent me. So that's how you know you love him. Because you love him and you love 
one another. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you what? All things. All things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. And that's why you, us, we as preachers, we got to be full of the Holy Ghost so the Holy Ghost can use us to teach you. Yeah. See, I can't just get up here and say whatever I feel like saying. I got to say what the Spirit of God is saying. Mm -hmm. I got to feed my responsibility, my main responsibility as a pastor is to feed you with knowledge and understanding so you don't become a prey to the end. Mm -hmm. Help you to understand. Mm -hmm. Okay? But that's what the Holy Ghost will do. Now, look at verse 27. Peace I leave with you. What? My peace. My peace. In other words, the peace that I had when I was here in the earth, mm -hmm. I'm going to leave it for you because you're going to need it. Thank you, Jesus. We need his peace. Look at the stuff that's going on all around us. If you don't have the peace of God, oh, Amen. Jesus. Amen. Jesus. Amen. And it's going to get worse. Yes, it is. Amen. And you see what's happening in Ukraine, and I keep telling us it's coming to a city near you. Sooner or later, it's yes. going to reach America. Yes. yes, I believe that. Because the people that's in control of it, which is ultimately the devil, it's going to be a worldwide thing. Uh -huh. So we're going to have to have his peace. Yes. Yes. We're going to have to yes. um, know him. Because when, when, when the the Bible said the earth is going to reel to and fro and rock like a what? A drunken man. Yeah. And if you don't have the peace to oh. stabilize you, mm -hmm. and you know what his peace is? His word. Yes. See, whenever, I, I remember what he said in the beginning of this chapter, let not your heart be troubled. Yes. You know how we let our heart be troubled? Mm -hmm. We don't know the peace of God. Yes. We don't know the word of God. We forget that all things work together. Yes. No matter what we're going through, yes. it has to be working together yes. for our good if we love God yes. and we're called according to his purpose. Yes. That gives you peace in the midst of the storm. Right there. Right you know, there. And God's going to try you. Yes. Amen. Hey. Me and my wife, like I said, we finally got a little project, a little housing project going and they came and laid the foundation they started to build but you know what getting to that point I was about ready to I was a few times leave, I was like I wish I wouldn't even started this some of the stuff was happening I was like uh, I mean I, I but at some point, I had to understand what God was doing. Mm -hmm. He was letting it go the way it was going because he was working on me. Yes. Wow. See, yes. if, that's why you can't put your trust in man. You pray, and if God needs you to do something, you trust him. And so I had to stop looking at men and say, well, okay, God, you got me out here now. Because yeah. I'm telling you, my wife will tell you, if if I hadn't already invested so much, mm -hmm. I'd have told the city of Vallejo, well, that's okay. I don't even want to do nothing else because y'all charge too much and y'all... Mm -hmm. I mean, the person that's doing our, our, our thing said they ain't never seen this, a city charge so many fees. Uh -huh. Watch this. Just think I ain't even we ain't even yeah. broke ground or nothing. Mm. And we out, we was out about, what, $11,000 in fees. Mm -hmm. yeah. Stuff we had to do. Right. And the lady was saying, normally it's, because when I went in, they said it's going to be about twenty five, maybe 3000 and 11000 later. Yeah. <laughs> I was say if I'd have known this, this just that that just blew my budget. But that's why you have to trust God. But I had to understand he was working on me. Oh, trying to give me peace, trying to teach me how to have peace, how to 
trust him that he's going to work it all out. Amen. That's what he said. Peace I leave with you. My peace. Whatever you're going through right now, you got to get in the word of God and you got to get his peace. He knew what was going to happen before yes, that. Yes, yes. So that's why sometimes he'll let you get way out there before stuff starts happening so you can't just slip back. Because why? He, he's he's going to fulfill yes. what he started. That's why he can't tell you everything. Just like with Joseph. He gave Joseph a dream, but he didn't tell him how he was going to get to the palace. He just said he was going to get there. Because <laughs> some journeys we would never embark on if we knew what we're going to have to go through. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, yes, Lord. But then when you go through it and you come out, you say, Lord, I thank you. I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't know about Potiphar's house. I didn't know about the prison. Jesus. Amen. Okay. But he said, peace, I'm leaving with you. Yes. His word is our peace. Amen. He is our peace. Get in the word and trust the word. And that's why he said you got to keep his word, what? Before you. Mm -hmm. He said, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world gives. The world yes. gives a temporary uh -huh. peace. Yes. But he yes. gives a permanent yes. peace. He gives a peace that will hold you in the midst of the storm. Oh, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Everything seems like it's just going haywire around you, but you just ride it out. <laughs> now, you got to get to that place. Oh, Because yes. most, most of the time, sometimes we like the, the apostles. We like the apostles. We like Jesus. Do you care that we perish? <laughs> And Jesus is in the back of the boat sleeping. That's the peace he wants to give you. And saints, I like keep telling us, it's, it's going to get real bad yeah. in the world. But the Bible has already told us, get in there and get it. So when it starts happening, you say, well, the Bible said this is going to happen. Mm -hmm. And so we just got to ride it out. Mm -hmm. That's it. Not as the world give it, give unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Ye have heard how I said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. If ye love me, ye will rejoice because I said I go unto the Father, for the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you before it come to pass that when it is come to pass, ye might what? Believe. Believe. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's why this is the most sure word of prophecy. Look at verse 30. Hereafter, I will not talk much with you. For the prince of this world cometh and hath what? Nothing, Nothing in me. But what happened to that? He had put in Adam and Eve and they passed it on to their seed. See? Because when the prince of this world come, because I was looking at my um, precious uh, little granddaughter, and I, they sent me a little video of it. And I just played it several times just to, you know, see. It. And she was, she's so cute and just so precious. But the fact is, she's full of sin. I know what we say. Oh, they innocent. That ain't what the book said. And if you think that's the fact, don't feed them when they want, when they ready to eat. You know, I'm, them babies, we've all seen them babies. You, they ready to eat, and you trying to get the food ready, and they get to hollering and, and crying. And if you don't get to it quick enough, they get so mad that oh, even when you try to give it to them, they don't want it. <laughs> Am I telling the truth? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Because they are born in sin. Shaping it in it. So what about Jesus? Mm. He said the prince of this world cometh, but he hath nothing, nothing in me. In me. Now, 
He wasn't talking about his flesh because his flesh mm -hmm. is just like yours and mine. Mm -hmm. If anybody else's spirit would have been in that flesh, it would have sinned. Mm -hmm. So what was he talking about? He was talking about didn't have nothing in his spirit. And this is what we're working on, saints. Yeah. Okay. This is why I teach us what I teach us here. You have to be careful what you are allowing in your spirit. That's right. Amen. Who you allowing to counsel you. Amen. Because good counsel, good worldly counsel might not be good godly counsel. Amen. That's right. That's right. Worldly counsel you to lie. They'll tell you, don't tell the truth. Because they'll tell you, if you tell the truth, then you ain't going to get what you want. Anybody ever been told that before? Mm -hmm. And you had a choice? You either told the truth. I, I, they told me that on my job one time. When I had just got on, I was doing my 90 days, and I had a little backing accident. And I went to my supervisor, and he kind of liked me. So he told me, he said, well, uh, don't say you back into the tree. Because <laughs> I was backing up and they tell you not to back up. But I was backing up. I didn't see the tree right there and the, you know, the little extended mirror. The tree caught it. When I heard it, I was like, oh. So he said, don't, don't, just say when you were parked it in the, in the parking lot, just say somebody came and broke it while it was in the parking lot. Oh, God. But because I was trying to obey God, mm -hmm. I said, I can't say that. Amen. Because a little white lie is still a lie. Right on. Right on. See, and the Bible tells us you have to be able to swear. Who shall abide in thy tabernacle? Yes, Who shall dwell in thy holy hill? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who have not lifted up his soul unto um, vanity or unto idols. Yes. And, and it goes on to talk about the person that swears to his own hurt and doesn't change. Yes, yes. I could have lost my job and my supervisor, because he like me, was trying to give me a way out, but I said, I can't do that. Amen. I got to tell the truth. Amen. So I told the truth. Mm -hmm. I wrote up the little thing and then the the person who take care of the vehicles, I'm casing my little route, just waiting. Cause you know how the devil put that fear on me. Yeah. And I was just started working there. So when he came walking to my thing, and he had his little paper, he said, this is what happened when you trust God. He said, we ain't even gonna call that an accident, we gonna call it an incident. <laughs> It's done. I'm, I'm 38 years later. When you trust God. Trust his counsel. Amen. Like Mother Mother was saying, you know, that's that's a that's a hard tearing thing for uh, to be put between you possibly losing everything, but your child needs but won't he, won't he, I, I yeah, said it like this, won't he do it? Yeah. Yeah. Won't he work it out? Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Amen, because he knows how. Huh? Yes. 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 But he said, the prince of this world come. How many know he's going to come? Amen. 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 And, and, and I'm going to tell you, he ain't going to even wait. For some of us, he ain't going to wait till we get out. You know, he said, when we step out the door, he ain't gonna wait. He'll come right in here. Yes. Yes. You got to be careful, folks. Have, I'm, it, it is. It, <laughs> church folk is something. <laughs> sometimes you be sitting up in church trying to hear the word, uh -huh. and folk be whispering in your ear stuff. Yeah. Uh -huh. Leave me alone. Tell me later. Because the devil go to church too, uh -huh. yeah. and he always trying to see. If it's somebody he can use. <laughs> and that's why I always teach us if he has something in you he can use, he can use you. Yes. He has a 
little envy in you, a little strife, a little jealousy. Now he can use you. So what God is telling us, we're going to stop right here for today because I said we're not going to be long. But we're going to revisit this next week because we're going to have to look at some scriptures mm -hmm. because he's going to prepare a place for us. Uh -huh. But he's coming again. And when he comes, he's going to have to find us with pure heart. Yes. We can't have nothing of the devil in us. And that's why we're going through this wilderness experience. Seeing he, he, he's allowed us to be tested to see what's in us so that we can get it out before. Because if he come and you still got some of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil in you. Huh? Now, I know some people don't believe it, but he's still coming for a church without a spot. A wrinkle, a blemish, or anything like that. Amen. Huh? And we're gonna look at the scripture that that he he requires. How many believe he requires perfection? You know what the book says? I don't say nothing the Bible. I don't say the Bible said be what perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. Yes. So that's what he requires of us. Amen. And we're going to work on it. We, we're working on us. Because mm -hmm. we won't be ready when he comes. Amen. 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 So we're going to stop right here. But next week we're going to pick it up. Amen. Let's give God a hand for this. So if you're a that one again.